Hey, this is James, back with another video of uh, B9 Robot Build. Uh, today, we're going to uh, show you some of the advantages of printing your uh, torso uh, on a 3D printer. Um, there's a couple of advantages I've found out as I've been building this, and I thought I'd share with the group. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, one of the first things that's really nice about uh, uh, building your own torso is it's pretty lightweight. It uh, doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's easy to pick up. Um, so that's one of the advantages. Another advantage is that it's uh, a lot of fun to do. It's pretty neat to put, put the uh, print the pieces and put them together and, and watch your uh, robot actually uh, come alive. Uh, I've, had, I've had a lot of fun uh, uh, building the robot, uh, printing the parts out and putting it together and seeing how things go. And this is the completed, mostly completed uh, torso. Um, got it mounted to the Lazy Susan already. Uh, still some things to do. I've got to print the uh, mount for the uh, uh, neon. I haven't decided if I want to use neon or come up with something else. Um, you can see part of my uh, central uh, support structure sticking up here. I've got to decide where I want the first shelf to go and then cut these bolts down to length. Um, and then I've got, uh, uh, haven't decided yet on the uh, um, programming bay whether I'm going to print that or, or, or buy one of the group's uh, versions. I haven't decided on that. I'll probably print one and see how it goes. And if I don't like it, then I'll. Um, Buy a complete kit. Um, I do like the one. I think I think it's Greg has the uh, complete kit with all the lights and the tape uh, reel and switches and labels and everything. Um, but we'll see. Um, but that's some of the the obvious advantages of doing it with the uh, printer is that you got uh, um, it's lightweight and, and it's fun to put together. Uh, one of the other advantages is that uh, you can easily take it apart and put it back together um, in case you want to change something around or fit some different parts or, or, or do some different things with it. Um, and that's, that's really nice. I like that uh, aspect of it. Um, but uh, one thing I would suggest if you're going to uh, do a 3D printed uh, torso is to... Um, uh, not glue it until the last minute. Um, if you make a mistake, uh, or you, something doesn't fit, or you want to try something else, or maybe add some modifications, make some modifications to a particular part of the torso, um, without it being glued together, just bolted together, you have that option. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, so I haven't glued mine together yet. Um, this is just bolted together. Um, my, I, my plan is I'm not going to glue it until I've fitted everything in it and got pretty much done the way I want it done. Then I'll see about um, uh, actually gluing it together. Uh, and that will be closer to when I'm fin doing the finishing work, sanding and painting and that sort of thing. Anyway, for those of you just, uh, maybe this is the first video you've seen of mine. Uh, this is printed on uh, with a silk silver PLA uh, plastic. Um, a little more lighting here, you can see it has a pretty good shine to it. Uh, looks pretty cool. I thought I'd just go ahead and, and print it in something that's close to the final, or somewhat close to the final look of it, so that you know until I get around to finishing it, it'll, it'll kind of look that way. Um, so one of the other advantages of doing the 3D printing, and unfortunately, I have an example of it uh, right here, is if you do something stupid like I did and drop it and break a piece. Right there, it's broken all the way across here. Uh, it's actually broken right there and right there where I had two bolts uh, coming together and hit right there and busted out. Uh, you don't have to rebuild your whole uh, torso. You can just print that part that you broke. Um, so that's a nice advantage. Uh, I'm out of PLA right now, or at least that brand I was using. Uh, let me try another brand. I hope it matches up, but uh, it'll stay together for now, but I'll eventually have to print that over. Um, another reason it's nice to have these multiple pieces is 
Um, you know, Ian, Ian Hughes is, is the one who's uh, designed the parts for us, and thanks again, Ian. I really appreciate it. He's doing a great job. Um, but we both discovered that uh, the, this piece right here, uh, along with this piece right here, I don't know if you can see the two pieces, but um, those will actually fit on most printers. So it's better to print this as one piece. So it actually would be one piece to here, up to here with the collar part there. Um, and I, my first one didn't print very well. That's the very first piece I printed and, and realized I had to have the temperature up a little higher. So it didn't print that good. There's kind of a weak spot in there. So I was kind of planning on printing that again and, and, and doing that over and doing this one as a single piece. And so that gives you the advantage, uh, another advantage of, of the printing is you can take out a piece and redo it and, and if you need to break, if it broke, if you decide to do something different. Um, one of the things I'm doing that a lot of people aren't doing because they don't have a big enough printer, but you'll notice I've printed very large pieces instead of having four pieces here, this is all one piece. Also did that down here in the bottom. Uh, it did present a little bit of a problem um, making these pieces this way because I have got them in here, but right down here is supposed to be kind of the shelf area on the bottom of the vent area that goes right there. And there was no real good way of mounting that piece in there the way um, Ian designed these big pieces. And I love the big pieces. It's a nice one solid piece there, no seams or nothing. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out a way, well, I have figured out a way of, of getting the, crop, the piece that goes between these two down here at the bottom. Um, uh, how to do that. And I'll show you in a minute um, when I open up the inside and show you the inside. Um, but anyway, that's, that's how I kind of designed it. Now, my initial attempt was to uh, design the, or build the uh, torso so it was in three sections. And naturally, the three sections would be the bottom here, the middle of the torso, and the top section. And the reason I wanted to do that is so I could easily take it apart, put it together, um, add things to it, show people the insides, that sort of thing. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is just do two sections. I haven't decided yet, but again, I haven't bolted, I haven't glued it together, so I can change my mind. Um, I think I'm just going to go with a section from here down, and then this all be one piece when it's finally done. And the reason I think I'm going to do that is because by the time you get the lights in here, the neon in here, and all mounted, um, it's going to be kind of hard to separate it here. Um, it may be possible maybe to mount the neon up here and have it loose down here or something like that. I don't know. I don't have a neon piece or I haven't worked on that yet. So I may not split it there. But I am going to split it down here. And I'm going to show you why. And this is another nice thing about having a, a printed uh, torso instead of a one-piece torso. And that is because it can be broken down into multiple pieces. I do not have it bolted together right now. And I can easily lift the torso right off the center structure. That is really handy when it comes to adding the insides, programming, or putting the uh, robotics in and all that. So basically, it can separate really nice. Doing it that way, when I put the robot arms in, which will be somewhere around here, uh, the torso will be easily lifted up on that. And I can easily get to this stuff and work on it and don't have to worry about uh, how I'm going to disassemble or anything to get to it. It makes it really nice and easy. Um, as long as you keep your shelves small enough to fit through the center of the top hole there, you got it made. Um, so that's, that's a great advantage. I think that's really uh, uh, a, a nice thing about the printed deal so you can easily do that. Um, and so that's, that's, that's kind of my plans on, on how, to, how to do my torso on, on multiple pieces. The other thing I wanted to show you was the inside here. And so let me uh, get the camera position a little bit better so you can see that um, on the inside there. All right, so there's my... Uh, uh, Lazy Susan in the bottom of the torso. Um, now, this setup here, the way uh, Ian and I came up with this larger prints, 
again uh, there's a piece that goes in here um, but uh, it made it hard to actually mount uh, because these pieces do flex some so uh, what I did was I cut out a um, this is acrylic I just haven't taken the paper off of it yet but that's just acrylic piece and I cut it out and notched it around the support uh, deals fit it right there and then glued it all together right there so this essentially this ring and these four pieces and the other four that have to go in here yet which will be glued to the acrylic um, that will be essentially one piece when it's all done and that's what mounts uh, straight down um, you know down to the uh, uh, main first shelf and the um, gear that goes in there and all that so um, that that's that's pretty uh, uh, that's, that's the way I ended up solving that little issue there of having it and then I just mounted it with some wing nuts um, and so I could easily get in through the vents if I if I want to take it off that way I can easily reach inside the vents here and unscrew these and lift the base off of the of, off the uh, lazy Susan um, so that's kind of how I'm going with the insides and the and the turbo or the, uh, the, the torso uh, setup. Um, the only issue I haven't worked out until today, I think I've got it figured out, was actually how I was going to to assemble these. Um, and let me get you the piece that I'm I built. Uh, it's a it's a prototype. I haven't got the final design yet. Let me get that real quick, and I'll show you how I'm going to actually put the top part onto the bottom part. All right, so I'm back. Um, so what I've done is I've designed this little piece here. I guess you can see that. Uh, it's basically just a post. Um, need to make the post a little bit bigger. I made it too small. But what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see if I can get an angle here where you can see it decently. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, yeah, you might be able to see it there. I'm basically going to glue this on the underside of the bottom through the mounting, the screw holes. All right. And on the glasses on, there we go. And it'll make a post right there, and then the top part will just sit on top of it. Put enough of these little posts in on all these screw holes, and that should be plenty to hold it in place. Obviously, um, it won't be a, a, a tight fixture, but the weight of it and all keep it in place. And with enough of them all the way around here, uh, all these holes, uh, that'll help line it up and get it in, in place. Because once you put the torso down over all that, you can't get in there to really screw anything in. Um, but if I just put those uh, these posts in there, glue them in permanently on the bottom side, then I should be able to drop the uh, top of the torso right over those pins and it should work pretty nice. Now, right now it's just a theory. Uh, once I get a few of these built and actually glued in here, we'll see if it works or not. But anyway, that's a, a little post I made that'll just glue up in there and, and uh, hopefully hold the two parts together. So, anyway, so that's, uh, that's the uh, video for today. Um, more videos to come. Thanks for watching.